Good evening. My name is Bob Pod. I'm from Syracuse. Tonight, I'm going to be talking to you about timeless love. But first, I'd like to thank everyone for being here in support of the Music Village. What they're doing here is important. Music is important. I believe that music is the voice of God. Three and a half years ago, I lost Sherry, my wife, 45 years. We had been together for 48 years. She was my high school sweetheart. She was the love of my life. I don't really believe in love at first sight, but I do have to admit that for me, it happened with her. During the grieving process, it's important to keep yourself busy doing things that you enjoy. And for me, that was playing music. I started coming here to the Tuesday night jams late in that process. I've met several talented musicians and a lot of really good people throughout the area. My story tonight is about a harmonica that came up missing one Saturday morning in Elkhart and it reappeared the following Saturday morning in Goshen. <laughs> I recognized this as a paranormal experience, <laughs> having already experienced a couple of them at that point in time. On the first and third Saturdays of the month, I go to Hot Dog Eddie's downtown Elkhart for a Saturday morning jam. On the second and fourth Saturdays of the month, I go to the Goshen Farmer's Market for a jam. On every Thursday in between, I would go to the Gateway Winery Cellar in Goshen for an open mic night. One Saturday morning, I'm in Elkhart getting ready to play, and I realized I'm missing a harmonica. Since I had all of my harmonicas the previous Thursday at the winery, I figured I must have left one there. So on my way home, I stopped at the winery to see if my harmonica was there. Nobody knew anything about it, but there were a couple more people that weren't there, so I had to wait until the following Thursday at the open mic night to check with them. Again, no luck, no harmonica. The following Saturday, I went to the Goshen Farmer's Market, and they have the stage built into one of the corners, and next to the stage is a table, paper plates, plasticware, napkins, and a microwave oven. I always sit up next to that table so I can put my harmonica case, my cell phone, and my drink on the table. I happened to be the first one there that particular morning, and I'm up on the stage setting my chair up, and I happen to look over on top of the microwave oven, and there's my missing harmonica. <laughs> I kind of wondered how something like that could happen in a public place. I had to admit to myself it was early in the morning, there weren't a lot of people there, and anyone that was there would have had their back to the stage looking at the booths and what they had to offer. But I sort of got an answer to that question a few weeks later at home. I have a couple maple trees that are constantly dropping twigs and limbs, and so I have a fire pit set up off the end of my patio to burn some of this stuff up. And so one day I'm burning up twigs and limbs, and I decided that I wanted to try to bake a potato in the coals. Um, I have one of those white plastic patio chairs sitting at the end of the patio by the fire pit, and next to it's one of those little white tables, and that's where I had my glass of tea sitting. So I picked my tea up, went in the house, refilled my tea, cleaned and wrapped a potato, got ready to go back out to stir the coals, and I couldn't find my glass of tea anywhere. I retraced my steps through the house, even went so far as to check the bedrooms and the bathrooms, even though I hadn't gone in there. <laughs> no glass of tea. So I went ahead and went back out, and when I walked out to sit in the chair, I walked around the side where that little table was, and I looked straight down on the ta that table just to make sure there was nothing there, there was nothing there. I sat down in the chair, I leaned forward, opened up the door on the fire pit, started 
was stirring the coals, and out of the corner of my eye, I could see a white form coming up from behind me, hovering over this plastic table. I thought it was my dog, Dustin, because she's all white, and she's about the size that could stand <coughs> over the top of that table. But I also thought it was a little strange because she's kind of leery along the fire pit. She doesn't like smoke and flames. So I finished stirring the coals, closed the door and fire pit, sat back in the chair, and I decided to look over on the table. And there, where moments earlier there was nothing, sat my missing glass of tea. And I noticed behind me, Dusty's by the patio door, wanting back in the house. Now, I don't have a clue as to how all of this works. I have no idea how objects can disappear from this reality in one place in time and reappear in this reality in a different place in time. But as impossible as that sounds, I know that it can happen because it's happened to me multiple times. I also don't know why I've been allowed to see and experience these things. And I don't know why she was allowed to show them to me. I suspect that it had something to do and probably had everything to do with the timeless love that we share. To the skeptics who think <coughs> that it might be crazy, maybe I'm seeing things, imagining things, I would refer you to the book titled Handprint on the Mirror. It's about a woman who on the first two anniversaries of her husband's death had a handprint appear on her bathroom mirror. He had injured his hand and his little finger was slightly bent and this injury was reflected in the handprint and so she knew that they were his handprints. I'd like to close with our song, It's When a Man Loves a Woman, Since I believe that she's here with me this evening, this is for Sherry. The reason that this is our song, that's another story for another time. 